Hello everyone and welcome back to my Sandbox EDB series in KSP 1.0.2. This time we have the first official launch in 1.0 of the venerable Taurus B, the largest of the EDB's single stage to orbit reusable launch vehicles. We'll talk more about it on the way up, but let's get the launch underway. T minus 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and off we go. At the bottom of this launcher are four mainsails and one rhino. The rhino is used on launch up to 1,000 meters but then turned off because it's not efficient at sea level and will be turned on again to complete orbit. Originally designed in the .25 version of the space program, this launcher utilized legal part clipping, no cheat menu stuff, because at the time the EDB didn't have access to gizmo technology. Through .25 and .90, it was involved in some spectacular failures, but engineers believe that now, in 1.0.2, it has finally come of age. This in spite of the fact that its core engine is now much weaker at sea level, of course. One of the key features of the Taurus B is the fact that it is fundamentally asymmetric. It is wider on two of the sides and basically has a rectangular shape to it at the base. Engineers aren't sure whether this has any beneficial effect or not, but it sure seems to be going all right right now as we see the center engine relit and the main sails off as the center engine can now perform at its peak performance, 340 seconds of ISP there, and fairing separation. And then we can see the payload. The payload for this mission is the core module of the EDB's Mooner Station, which will be named Bean Station after astronaut Alan Bean. This module couldn't be launched on the EDB shuttle because the EDB shuttle only has a capacity of 7 tons to moon or orbit. Uh, we're not entirely sure what the capacity of the Taurus B in this version of the space program is, but we'll look forward to testing out its uh, capacities in future missions. This, however, was a relatively light payload for this launcher. Once Apoapsis reached 100 kilometers, the core engine was shut down and the coast to Apoapsis began. Up to this point, the flight was absolutely nominal, trajectory right spot on on the prograde vector all the way. And here we see the huge launcher slowly turning towards the prograde vector again as it reaches apoapsis and the engine relighting in order to supply a little bit more, more maneuverability there using its own gimbling. Once orbit is reached, of course, this mission will have two parts. One is returning the launcher back to the ground safely, and the second is delivering the station into lunar orbit. And you can see the station's unique configuration here. It is mounted upside down on the launcher there. Here the Taurus B makes orbit, uh, not quite circular, but sufficient for our purposes here. And the payload is released. It uses its own RCS thrust to boost a bit away from the launcher and then control will be shifted to its main controller and there we have the shift in control so that's controlling from the correct side and it slowly turns around so that's thrusters will be facing the proper direction when it comes time for it to boost itself to the moon and after that we expect the solar panels to unfurl, oh, and the ignition of the thrusters. Very small thrusters on this, and so the transit to the moon will take some time. It looks like only one of the solar panels unfurled, but uh, we are going into manual deployment mode here to ensure that everything is alright. More than enough electric charge capacity here but it looks like we've got all the solar panels out. And now the return of the Taurus B to, to the ground, hopefully. The Taurus B is technically capable of being retrieved either in the water or on land. However, if the land is too steep or if the splashdown is too severe, of course the launcher may not be retrievable after all. And in that case, the cost to the EDB might be significant. And so here we see uh, the standard retro burn to 30 kilometers and we'll have to test what proper altitudes we should use for the return of this vehicle that will take quite some time I'm sure but uh, at this point as the Taurus B went across the Western Ocean the trajectory was looking 
close to nominal, not too far off, but there was some concern that the launcher would land short. Here we see the launcher approaching the home continent and in flames. Its base structure, especially with the four main sails and the KR-2L, is remarkably resilient to the heat, and so there was no indication of overheating through this descent. And here we see the trajectory as it approaches the western coast there. Looking again like it's going to end up short, and the concern is that it would hit those mountains. Of course, the, the mountains to the west of the KSC, always a peril for any return. And here as the Taurus B entered the thicker parts of the atmosphere, a decision had to be made whether it was going to use its engines and its braking in order to attempt to land west of the mountains or whether it would try to land east of the mountains. What would you decide? Ultimately, the EDB decided to attempt to land west of the mountains. And here we see deployment of the air brakes once the temperatures were considered safe for air brake deployment without overheating. And with that not working enough, the engine was lit. Actually, the four mainsail engines, not the KR-2L. Of course, the KR-2L, not very efficient in the atmosphere, and so the engine control was shifted to the mainsails. And here we see early parachute deployment. Uh, typically, the parachutes would be deployed below the speed of sound. Here we see them deployed closer to Mach 2. And of course, that was because of the emergency situation with the mountains looming right there. But here, the Taurus B was configured for touchdown. You can see the area that it is aiming for. The area is mostly clear of slopes, though not entirely level ground. And it was a nervous situation at Mission Control all the way down here. For a Taurus B, of course, being such a large launcher, the parachutes are not adequate to slow it down completely. It always needs some engine power, some thrust, in order to slow itself down on touchdown. And here you can see the parachutes not slowing it enough to allow it to survive. And engine thrust indeed being applied using the mainsails to bring it to a slow descent. But the question is, with the ground not level, can it remain upright? Okay, there we go, touchdown, and indeed quite a lean to it. But a valiant, a valiant little Werner thruster appears to be managing it. Yes, that, that one Werner thruster is keeping it from tilting over. Actually, it has some help with another Werner thruster there. But there you have it, uh, the Taurus B successfully landed, and it will be recovered thanks to that Werner thruster. Back to the main mission, the core module of Bean Station will use its own thrusters, of course, to make its way into lunar orbit, and that's what we'll see here, the transfer. Uh, there you see the transfer plot. But this is only the initial burn. As I mentioned earlier, the, the engines on this module are not powerful enough to boost it on a single boost, and so it will do half of the burn here, go around Kerbin, and then do the rest of the burn on a second orbit. Most of the lights on this module are docking lights, but you can see uh, three lights that are positioned to provide an inner glow, that green glow, distinctive green glow, for this module. There we have the end of the first burn, and you can see the resulting orbit there, and the second burden being plotted, care and consideration being given to ensuring that the inclination is completely flat, so this will be an equatorial station. The reason it's being put into a free return trajectory and at the equator there is mainly because that's how the shuttle will be transferred. And so to make it easier for the shuttle to reach the station, it's best to have it in this sort of position with the retrograde orbit around the moon and such. Mission planners wanted to minimize how much fuel this shuttle would need to rendezvous with Bean Station in order to maximize the potential payload that the shuttle could bring to the moon. Here you can see the final orbit taking shape, and indeed a very tight orbit 
between the moon and Kerbin there. The crew capacity for this module of the station, by the way, is 16 Kerbals, and so quite a high crew capacity. It's obviously got fuel of its own, mop propellant, and solar panels, so it's a fully functional station as we see it enter Mooner SOI. And so that's one of the benefits. Uh, no need for many other modules to be added here unless they are so desired. This is already a very substantial station. And here we will see it make its approach to the moon as it nears its periapsis in order to make orbit around the moon. Plenty of fuel to spare. If we had so desired to put it into an inclined orbit, of course, that would have been doable as well. The inclined orbit would have made it easier for surface modules to rendezvous with it, like the fuel lift truck, but of course the main consideration was given to the shuttle here. And here we see the final orbit being formed, not quite circular, but again serviceable. And uh, you'll also note that the fuel lift truck is already in orbit, and it is going in the opposite direction. Uh, this is a little bit of a problem for the EDB, but but we weren't going to bring the fuel lift truck to this station yet. There is one more thing to do with the fuel lift truck, and we'll talk about that in a second, as Bean Station officially gets christened, turned into a station, and now we'll turn to the lift truck to talk about that. The issue with the fuel lift truck is that we still don't know how much fuel it takes to bring it back down to the surface where the driller truck is and so we need to test that out before transferring fuel from this truck to the station and so that test will take place in, in in a certain amount of time we will have to plan that out appropriately when it originally approached the moon of course the fuel lift truck had a transfer stage to help it land and so that wasn't an adequate test anyway you see here the fuel lift truck being renamed and we'll leave it for now Turning back to the station, here we see Bean Station in its proper orbit around the moon with Kerbin in sight. Will the shuttle be able to transfer to this after all? That was the plan, but can it manage it with the fuel that it has on board? Well, we'll have to try that out as well. So two things to try out, the fuel lift truck, how much fuel does it take to get back to the ground, and can the shuttle really rendezvous with this station? And with that, we hope you enjoyed this presentation of Sandbox EDB, and we hope you will join us for future EDB missions. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and we'll see you next time.